I'm back now at 940, improving fitness, finances, mental health, <laughs> usually among the top of your New Year's resolutions. But getting a better night's sleep could be the key to attaining all of your goals. That's right. Uh, we could all use a bit more rest. We could all use a bit more rest. Let me say it again. So here to help us catch up on more Z's in 2024, CEO and co-founder of WhisperSom, Michael Nathans. Michael, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Good morning, Oma. Good I hope you got a great night of rest before you came on. Oh, I did. Thank you. Um, okay, so we know it's important. We say it all the time. We say seven, eight, nine hours for so many people. That truly seems unattainable. So start off with your best advice for folks. Well, the best advice is to get good rest. It's not how long you sleep, mm. it's how well you sleep. And it's important to prepare yourself to go to sleep. And the things to do are make sure you eat right, but not right before you go to sleep. And exercise. It's important to get about 10,000 steps a day, so by the time you lay down and go to sleep, you're digested and you're tired enough to get sleep within 20 minutes is all it should take, really. That's probably the key, right? Get yourself tired so that you do fall asleep right away. Yes. And I do know you get a lot of your best sleep right away, right, when you first you fall asleep. So you if do. you're like me last night and the fire alarm goes off at 1 in the morning, oh. at least I got three hours sleep. So <laughs> it help at least a little bit if, if, if I fall asleep right away? Yes. One piece of advice that I'd give a lot of people is don't fall asleep on the couch after dinner. Mm. And you may, if you do it, you'll notice you go into a deep sleep, and when you wake up, you're, you got to find your bed. Yeah. And you're coming out of a deep sleep, and that first stage of sleep is the most restorative. And here's why your brain shuts down, you know, your eyes are closed, you're not getting input, your brain's not active, and your brain actually shrinks a little bit and opens up the folds in between your brain, so the fluid in your brain can wash out the toxins. And this happens every night, and especially when you're in your deep sleep in the first stages of sleep. And you really don't want to interrupt that by getting up off the couch and finding sure. your bed and turning on the lights and waking yourself up. At more. what point in that, in that deep sleep, or how quickly does REM start onsetting for us? Well, and it, is it different per person, or, is, or are we all kind of the same? It, it's different per person, but it goes in cycles. You go into a deep cycle first, and then you come into a lighter stage and back into deep sleep. And you know, depending on what's going on in your bedroom, or frankly, in your mind, mm -hmm. um, you can not get a lot of sleep or you can sleep you know, very deeply and very soundly. But the important thing is to be, have, be able to breathe while you're sleeping. And so people who snore typically struggle to breathe while they sleep. Uh, you brought some props in, yeah. and I, yes. I, I recognize the mask. I did not recognize the tennis ball and, and how that impacts us. What's the story with the tennis ball? Well, this is sort of funny. When I first started in this business, I read that uh, sewing a tennis ball in the back of your nightshirt will keep you off your back and reduce your snoring. It's a very low-tech way of right, doing it. Right, exactly. And we know how much um, snoring sleep apnea can not only impact your sleep, but yes. perhaps your partner's sleep, because we're yes. hearing more people doing these sleep divorces, sleeping in separate beds, separate bedrooms. Yes. Um, because at the end of the day, like you said, it's quality of sleep that's the yes. key here. Yes. Sleep divorce is coming into our lexicon more and more. Right. And it really has a negative connotation. But it's really a good practice because sleeping next to somebody who's snoring, you're not going to get good sleep. Yeah. And if you're snoring and getting elbowed and punched and <laughs> kicked, you're not going to get good sleep. Guilty. So it's really good, to actually, to have separate bedrooms in those uh, instances. You mentioned the brain, and I'm glad that you did because, you know, when you talk about it, uh, how physically it's cleansing us as we sleep, right? And we're yes. getting that, that recharge. Uh, so why is it when I'm trying to get to sleep, I try to solve all the world's problems and I worry about something <laughs> that's going to happen nine months from now? Why, why do we get all of these thoughts as we're trying to get to sleep? Well, it's because you haven't exercised enough during the day. You're not tired enough, I guess, I, I would say. You know, every, every, Steve, every, every, uh, every, you've everyone's been called different. out. <laughs> you know, some people need the TV on to go to sleep. Yeah. You know, I can't. I quiet my thoughts. How, my how long should it take us, ideally? Like, once we lay down, yes. we're just like, we made the decision. Yeah, yeah. If my bedtime is, say, 10 o'clock yes. is bedtime, how long should it ideally take before I'm asleep? 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah, 20 Last minutes. question. Um, does pillow matter? Well, sure. It, it matters for a couple of reasons. One is... If you elevate your head a little bit, you're less likely to snore. Okay. But if you're wearing one of these CPAP masks, it's really hard to sleep on a regular pillow. So there are special pillows made for people who have sleep apnea that wear these masks. They have a little cutout here. So the mask has a place so it doesn't, you know, 
get sure. pushed off your face. Again, make it easier for you so that you can get to sleep. Your partner's happy. Yeah. Yes. Everybody works uh, works well together. Yes. All right. Well, we'll get ourselves tired out yes. and uh, <laughs> try not to take six naps during the day so that we can fall and asleep. And don't have minutes. apneas. They're so bad for you, especially yeah. in kids. They lead to diabetes. They lead to learning disorders in kids. Oh, we can do a whole I, other segment on that. We'll have yes. to have you back for that. Thank you so yes. much for sharing. Yes. Here's to, to better rest uh, for all of us in the new year. There's all the information for Whisper Some right there on your screen. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for having me today.